Anyways, the cricket's confused, and it's no wonder. It's like the public has rendered its judgment, and the judgment is positive. So, when I wrote the book on which this course is based, I, I was thinking, how am I going to judge its success? And then I thought, well, there's sort of four... There's a two-by-two two matrix of success. You could say, it's a great book, no one reads it. That happens. So what do you, what do, you do about that? It's like, Nietzsche sold virtually nothing in his lifetime, right? And you know that's happened to lots of artists, so... Then it's a terrible book, and everyone loves it. That happens, too. And then it's a great book, and everyone loves it. And then it's a terrible book, and everyone hates it. That's probably a better category, actually, that, like, it's a terrible book, that, and everyone loves it. I mean, you wouldn't pick a terrible book that everyone hates if you had a choice. But at least the quality and the response match. At least it's truthful, like great book, good response. But the problem with those four categories is you can't really tell which category your production falls into, right? Because how do you know? And, you know, I think you should assume horrible book, bad response, because that's the most likely, of all four of those categories, that's the one that's most likely to be true, but just, you know, purely on, on actuarial grounds, let's say. So, all right, so anyways, the cricket wanders away, because he obviously, not only was he late for work that day, but he turned out to be wrong about everything, so he lets Pinocchio go off on his adventure, and Stromboli puts him in this little, kind of like a... Uh, uh, a, a traveling, a touring wagon, you know, and uh, away they go. And the cricket thinks, well, he isn't in, the conscience isn't needed anymore on this journey towards unearned celebrity. Well, meanwhile, back at the ranch, as they say, um, the puppet is supposed to come home after school. But he doesn't. <clears throat> He doesn't show up, and the kitten <coughs> and the fish and Geppetto are all waiting there for him, ready to eat. <coughs> Excuse me. But he doesn't show up. And so Geppetto goes out into the rain to look for him, and he can't find him. And then we're, we see the inside of the traveling show cart. And Stromboli is having a snack and counting all the money that he's made from tonight's performance and hypothetically dividing it up with a puppet. So he's got this little stack of gold and uh, some of it's false. So somebody paid with a, looks like a little washer, like a mechanical washer and it's bent. And so he curses about that for a while, even though it's interesting eh, because he's made all this money, it's been really successful, but this one little error is enough to enrage him, which is very ungrateful and tyrannical. It's like, look, you got a hundred gold pieces, someone sh slipped you a fake one. It's like, you could have had a hundred and one. It's still a pretty good day, all things considered. You know, you got to make a bit of allowance for error, which is something a tyrant does not do. So, and that's perfect, because if you don't make allowance for error at all, then people are always guilty of something. And if you're a tyrant, that's exactly what you want. And people are always guilty of something. So, the tyrant who's willing to exploit that is always on solid ground. So, anyways, he doesn't share with Pinocchio. And he puts him in a birdcage, a jail. And then he also shows him this other puppet that has an axe through him. That was the previous puppet who didn't precisely perform as he was supposed to. And so there's a big threat there. It's like, you stay in that jail, you do exactly what I want, or it's off to the woodpile for you to be burned. And so, well, that, that's just worth thinking about, because that's kind of what happens with tyrants. And so, and, and literally, not just metaphorically. So, 